Tell them, tell them if you can get here in five minutes. Before you go on, we're doing no, I just ate before. Good evening and welcome to another segment of your community accountability with Sam and Dave. And tonight we have a sort of a special night. We actually have, <coughs> excuse me, folks. We have two guests with us tonight. Uh, first guest here tonight is Mary Leahy with the Ports Fest. Uh, she'll be discussing some of the things that go on uh, with Ports Fest and, and what it all entails. And in the second half of our show, we're going to have Willie A. Price. Uh, speaking about some of the uh, the family fitness programs and his boys to men program and the snug program and we just got a few things we want to talk about uh, in reference to that. But uh, uh, before we get into all that, uh, as everyone is well aware, there was a, a tragedy in the city of Buffalo this past weekend. Uh, Ten people lost their lives, and uh, we here at Community Accountability just extend our deepest sympathy and condolences to the family and friends of those uh, 10 that lost their life. Uh, and at this time, uh, just in honor of those 10, I'd like to take 10 second moment of silence. Uh, please uh, say your prayers for the families of those involved. May their souls rest in peace. Uh, and stick around after this show, uh, Vox Sports uh, is, well, Dave's going to be hosting Vox Sports, but uh, it's not going to be about sports tonight. Dave has a couple of special guests in tonight uh, to speak about uh, what happened in Buffalo and uh, uh, things of that nature, and uh, he's going to expand on that a little more uh, on his 8.30 segment tonight. So stick around after this show, and... Uh, We'll have Miss Jill Shaw, and who's her? Who's she brought, coming in with tonight, Dave? I think Jill's just coming in with Jill. Jill's coming in with Jill. Uh, okay. Hoping Jimmy, Jill's I'm a hoping lot. Jimmy <laughs> Johnson, a friend of mine from he back in the uh, man a while ago, but he lives in the area okay. of where that occurred. So I'm hoping he's coming. All right. We'll see. And and they'll they'll speak about that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, a couple of things going around here in the city before we speak with Mary. Uh, a little couple of community service items. Uh, this Saturday, I thought it was this Saturday, folks, but I'm going to get the date right. Saturday, June 4th, uh, at the Niagara Falls Am Amtrak Depot Station, train depot station, uh, free rabies clinic. Uh, you do have to make an appointment. Uh, it's from the Niagara County Department of Health. Uh, they're giving out the free rabies shots for your cats or dogs. And just contact them at 716-439-7511. Uh, another thing, I, I, I read this this morning, and I was... It sort of touched me. And, uh, you know, a lot of times cops get bad raps and things of that nature. Well, Tuesday, uh, today, uh, Officer Vonica Loyan was on a complaint call regarding a stolen bicycle in the Cayuga Village area. Uh, he went there, took the report from the family. Uh, when he got there, he saw how distraught the young man was. And I guess uh, Officer Loyan's heart sort of went out to him. Well... He told the boy and his family to meet him at Walmart, where Officer Vonica Loyan purchased the boy a new bike. I mean, this, this is just a, a, something he did from, from his heart. Uh, town of Niagara police officer. And, uh, you know, Officer Vonica Loyan, kudos to you. That was, that was just a hell of a, a gesture on your part. Uh, we, we just got a great, great police force here within the city of Niagara Falls and the town of Niagara. And speaking about people doing some great things, kids doing some great things, and uh, we're actually going to get this on one of our shows uh, in the very near future. Uh, call, it, call it the Olympics of Robotics. The LaSalle Prep School robotic team rolled into Dallas, Texas, on May 7th of this year for the VEX IQ World Robotics Championship wow. and left on May 11th with their teams ranking second and third on the planet. The LaSalle students competed against 800 teams from 40 countries with approximately 6,500 individual competitors and grabbed five of the top 10 placements. Hmm. That is simply amazing considering they're teams from all over the world. Right. Niagara Falls team finished 7th, 8th, and 9th in the world in their respective divisions. Here's a breakdown of the LaSalle results. 
The French Toast Mafia came in second place. <laughs> I, love that, I love that name. That is great. Love that name. I didn't pre-read this until just now. <laughs> uh, with Liliana, Liliana, if, uh, I'm going to butcher your last name, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Kiewitz, and Annalie Copeland. Robo Revenge was in third place. Aiden Chase, Michael Mettler, and Ian Aubie. The Kilobots, seventh place. Jennerino Briglio, Lucas Chamberlain, Ryan Janice. The Prestige, eighth place. And I know this one young man, Ryan Brady. Good friends with his dad, Jason Brady. And Michaela Paris. The Terminators, ninth place. Brody Kennedy, Daniel Knipp Knipple, and Elijah Printup. Congratulations to these fine young students. And the fact that they competed with teams all over the world and took five of the top ten placements is simply amazing. Next uh, week, I'd like to try to see what we can do without that. Well, we are working on that, and uh, hopefully we're going to get uh, uh, the, one of the teachers, maybe a couple of the parents and a couple of the uh, students in here, and let's, let's talk about it because it's totally amazing what these got kids the, do. I already got yeah. the information, emails. and Okay, good. Let's, and stuff, so. let's try to wrap that up. But uh, anyways... Mary, welcome aboard. Hello, how are you? Good, it's been a while. and uh, I think since the last podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Porch Fest is on our doorsteps. It is this weekend. So what is, what is going on? What can we expect? Um, well, we've kind of changed things up for a few reasons. Um, in the past years, remember you were down at 4th and Ferry with Pinky? Right. Well, we were afraid there was going to be construction down there. Because so, who knows when that's going to start. Yeah, you know, tomorrow, in the middle of Porch Fest or something, right. who knows. So we were able to um, find a few interesting stages. Um, people offered us their spaces. Billy O from The Craft is going nice. to let us use his deck. Uh, Morgan from Gold Bar is going to open up her garage door so that um, we'll have somebody on a semi-porch. Uh, we've got the aquarium involved and the two churches in the district, oh. the uh, Unitarians and the Baptists. Very nice. So it's actually uh, was kind of a blessing in disguise. So we were just going to go from 4 to 7 on Saturday. Um, people work, people's children have baseball games or their coaches. And um, we decided, uh, you know, to just, you know, take it easy since this is kind of the uh, warm up for the, the autumn one, right. for the bigger one. Well, we had such a wonderful response that we are doing pre-porch fest instead of the night before, the afternoon of. So from 2 till 4, um, we've got some additional players on no, very our good. place. Okay. And it's truly going to be uh, family-friendly and fun. Um, first uh, band, first gig, it's called the Canines. Okay. It's uh, Luciano Caffarella and Eric Benedict. They're Wait, nine. Wait, Lu Luciano Caffarella, isn't he like... Nine. Nine years old? Nine. His muse is John Lennon, so you really? like him. Hmm. He's got the glasses and everything. No kidding. Bought that should be amazing. Bought him babysitting money. And Michael Benedict's son, uh, you know, Jason ran right. his campaign. They've been friends forever. So they're going to be on the um, law office's porch. And they know three songs. So um, they, they're beyond excited. Actually, Luciano told me this is his dream. So, And it's my dream to get younger people involved. A little younger than I originally thought, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of videos of, about young talent, five and six and seven, eight, nine years old, and you know what? At nine years old, I wouldn't have the nerve to sit out there in front of a bunch of people. But you know what? God bless this kid, and uh, uh, he took. Uh, his, you got to get out there yeah. and listen to him. He took his phone away from his grandmother so he could talk to me, and his first question was the same question that every musician asks: Will I have electric? So uh, he doesn't have to go, uh, you know, unplugged. Uh, and the beauty of it is Thomas Tedesco, who played on that porch for his first right. porch fest, um, is generous enough. He's going to let the boys plug in to his equipment so they don't uh, have to do a full setup. I had a friend that was going to come in with a Mac Pro, but Thomas is going to let them play with him. And okay. if they get nervous, he'll be there. So that's just how generous this young man is. He's, you know, sharing his equipment. And you know how musicians are. Right. So. Well, you know, the, the Tedesco name, I mean, it's, it's, there's a long legacy of musicians in that family. So, uh. Hoping his dad Tommy is there. His dad Tommy yeah. jumped up on the porch with him last year, so that was cute. Right. Um, but I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's a, the porch is a little smaller <laughs> this year, so he might just be in the audience. 
And uh, so that's at 2 o'clock. That's the opener. Okay. Thomas will play a set. And then we go to uh, the Butler House, which what we call the neighborhood band. Right. Uh, Nelson and Thomas always um, puts together a great mix of musicians. And this year, one of them is going to be Dante Miles. Dante Miles on so, stage. Yeah. I'll be. Oh, really? You know, I've, I've always heard, you know, things that he plays. I've never heard him play, but. Uh, well, I saw him a couple times when he was with Miller and the Other Sinners. And, really? Um, yeah. He's, well, his, uh, his musical name is D-Belly. So. Uh, hey, Colin <laughs> says uh, she would have came tonight, but she's too busy painting your rocks. There you go. <laughs> she is, uh, you know, Colin, she doesn't have anything else to do. Right. So when I put out the word that uh, Anita West actually does these 97 rock rocks. So we're going to do Port Fest rocks. And her son's involved. Okay. And uh, Anita tagged herself on it, and she gets a free one if she comes. Well, nice. She nice. loves the blues, so we've got some good blues on Park Place. Well, you know, if he's played with, uh, that, I've probably seen him and heard him and not real. well, I didn't know him at that time then. Well, he was uh, at Boosh, Bruce, and Bacon. Okay, then but, I didn't know that. <laughs> but it's, it's a huge band. Right. You right. know, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, a full-on orchestra. <laughs> but they, they call him D-Belly. Okay, that's going to that's gonna stick with him now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Danta. <laughs> I won't give out your phone number. <laughs> there he is. He's a little younger then, his beard a little shorter, but uh, I can see why you wouldn't recognize him. He puts right. on his musician hat and just goes in the zone. So that's definitely going to be a fun time. Um, then from 4 till 7, continuing on uh, Park Place, it's going to be the Snob Knockers, special je uh, guest George Kobus, who was one of the founders right. of Porch Fest. A new band, uh, well, let me tell you, the, the other band's going to be John Dudley, and a new band that I think I was kidding you about. That, did you recognize it? Do you know these people? They know you. Phoenix 828, they're out of Lewiston and used to play in a garage band with Jack Caruana in high school. Hmm. I don't know. I have to see him. So this is another Lisa McHugh reunion. Okay. So uh, see Pinky. Lisa's going to be um, over on 4th Street. Uh, so there'll be some retail on 4th Street. But uh, yeah, Park Place is definitely going to be happening. Uh, there's a new uh, bed and breakfast that's opening and she's doing a wonderful job. It's, it's not up and running yet, but she's going to let people see, you know, the beauty of, of the building. Is that Cherish? That's Cherish Beals. It's going to be the Marshall House. Oh, yeah. Was and yeah. Um, Sheila Zuni um, restored a, a wedding gown from the original owner, um, Dr. Marshall, I guess. And uh, it's just a, a historic neighborhood, all these kind of epic things all kind of coming together and, you know, an interesting domino effect. So, well, I mean, that sounds like, I mean, you, you've, you've sort of taken taking it to the next level? Well, you know, it's, uh, it, we wanted it to be organic. You can't all of a sudden have 30 porches and 100 musicians right. because it just doesn't work. And our neighborhood is old and everyone doesn't have a porch and everyone's porch can't accommodate a band. Well, that's true, that's <laughs> so, true. You know, with the, with the weight. So that's Park Place. And um, also starting a little early will be the guys over at 764th, um, Jerry Masseri's band. Oh, okay. I know drummer. Jerry. I know yeah. Jerry. Um, so Icon Falls is going to be there. Uh, Carol and John Relicki, um, Dave Stanton, he's on the screen now. Um, just a plethora of musicians, including... Um, uh, Ed Perlman, who is a local attorney, right. and um, he hides behind the harmonica and a hat, yes. <laughs> calls himself Ned instead of Ed. So he's going to be um, at that end of the world as well. And um, that's the only porch in that block, but then moving up the street um, to 642, 636, we're going to um, have uh, a couple of trios and duos for the whole time, four to seven. Pinky's going to be there, so we'll have some retail therapy. And then up at the First Baptist Church, Lee's Shish Kebab Heaven is going to be oh, at a church, good. which will be funny. And um, Mike and Eileen, who are parishioners, you probably know Eileen Robo, she's also an yes. artist. Okay. Her mom is actually the reverend there. Okay, okay. So um, they're opening up their doors, they're having a basket raffle, selling water for charity, and letting us use the lavatories. So that that's, works. that's a plus. That, that works. <laughs> that was definitely a plus. And uh, the thing that I'm most excited about, because I think it's the most beautiful porch on Main Street, is the um, Unitarian Church. 
uh, but the yes. white pillars, it's in the block of the beautiful post office. Right. So we can really show off the neighborhood, the architecture, and all the things that go on. Uh, Bobby Lee and Norm, uh, Bob's acousticness, it's hard to say, are going to start there at 4.30. Okay. They're going to play as long as they want. And then Patricia, the musical director, is going to give tours of that building. And um, she's a pianist, was with the Philharmonic in the chorus. So she's going to um, let people come through the uh, church, which is fun. Good. That'll be nice. Now, on a couple of these, you probably see Kim Reeves. And we're going to do a little rest in peace ceremony for Kim Reeves and the bands that mm -hmm. he played with. So uh, that'll be special. And uh, Bobby B. Photography will be video the whole thing, photograph for everyone, especially these new people who I don't have photos of. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so they'll, they'll, they'll get their photo op. Oh, that's good. That's good. I see the next picture that should be popping up. Is that Norm Bach? Um, that's Norm, Norm Bob that. Lee, and Kim Reeves. Okay. He, uh, Kim played with them and with the Snob Knockers. Gotcha. So that's going to be wonderful. And then uh, our buddy Jim Neese inherited a uh, circus uh, Calliope, and that's going to be down at the aquarium. Oh, really? So all kinds of music, all kinds of um, folks, and uh, it's going to uh, be a I good mean, that time. Just, that'll just be a fun way to sort of kick off the summer, because we definitely didn't have a spring. <laughs> and, really, uh, we haven't in years, you're right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's this is what pe people like this. I mean, it's, it's they, they will travel and, and bounce around to just listen to different music and good music and, and just, you know. And it's free. Yep. They do work for tips, so, you know, bring your change. But um, great guys. Um, everybody's on the same page. We want to show the positive people and the good parts of our neighborhood in Niagara Falls, New York. Well, that, that'll just be, uh, that, that'll just be uh, phenomenal. Looking forward to, to seeing all the musicians out there and the band that knows me, but I don't know them, but uh, I'll be looking forward to <laughs> I'll make sure you get down there. Yes, you'll have to send me a reminder of the name and everything because I'll, I'll forget by tomorrow morning. Oh, he, uh, he immediately knew you. And what was his name again? Jack Caruana. He, I, he has not Caruana. seen you since high school. What's so that? He has not seen you since high school, so oh. I, I suspect you both have changed. I have not met him yet. <laughs> well, I, in high school, I was 132 pounds, so yeah, I've <laughs> quite a bit. But uh, yeah, probably as soon as I see him, I'll know who it is. But uh, you have to let me know where they're at and all that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Luciano Caffarella. I mean, I'm just totally blown away uh, w with the fact that he's nine years old and he's going to be out there playing. Yeah, and he, um, he really idolizes the Beatles. So we had a, a young man um, at the last Porch Fest, Ben Nicholas, and he loved Zeppelin and Hendrix. He's actually wow. traveling this month. He had just graduated high school, and he's going to be in Israel. So uh, he'll be back for the fall. So we are recruiting porches. If anybody's in the neighborhood, we would uh, you know, love to have you. Now, I heard there may be a special uh, guest playing, uh, sort of a, a traveling minstrel player. Uh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> not playing, but well, we'll see how his surgery goes. Well, oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Otherwise, we would have nailed him for a porch. Button. Our very own Peter Green may be out there <laughs> traveling on the roads. I'm, uh, I'm giving him a break. We'll have to see how he's feeling. He's going, he's going back under the knife again. and uh, Yeah, so, uh, you know, he might do man on the street interviews, musician on the street interviews for you guys. And uh, I'm going to give him a sign and some brochures anyway, even if he has to, you know, sit kind of disabled on his own patio. Right. We'll all get over to see him. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. And I know uh, if Peter is able to play, he'll put on a hell of a good show. So, but anyways, Mary, so we, we have... Porch Fest Spring. Correct. And then as soon as that's over, you start working on Porch Fest Fall? Well, Porch Fest Fall is really pretty much almost ready to go. Uh, hmm. So we're, you know, it's, it's not going to be um, too difficult. We did change the date because the Blues Fest is coming back. Blues Fest is going to be here. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. On Falls? On yeah, the just, just two days. On Old Falls? Yeah. Just oh, that's oh, the awesome. one from Toby Rotel that Toby Rotel used yep. to do? Okay. That, that actually was one of my, f the, one of the, my, my most favorite times on Old Falls Street is blues. Blues. Well, we um, moved the um, Blues Fest, not that we're in a competition for mm, it, right. but because I wanted to go. So it's going to be the 24th instead of the 17th. Of September? Or of September. September. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it was notorious the weekend they had it would rain. 
Well, it might rain this weekend, so it might be a little Woodstock-like, uh. but, um, you know, sometimes they say it's going to rain in Niagara Falls and it rains in Wheatfield or something, so. That's good, that's good. So it's, it's going to be looking like a, a fun time and uh, just looking forward to Ports Fest. Uh, and uh, during the summer, we're going to work on Niagara and Bloom. Oh, not good. So good. Um, we will definitely get that info to you so okay. people can uh, submit their porches and hopefully uh, have a porch on playing on the porch day. It's a national day in August. Sounds good. Any final words, Mary? Looking forward to really meeting everybody. Um, I actually got to meet um, Willie Price tonight, and um, I had a uh, kind of neat story with him. He doesn't remember me, but... Um, he gave, he donated twenty dollars to a book sale that we had down on Old Falls Street. He and his wife were walking around. We were working for literacy, and um, I've been looking for him ever since. I thought his last name was Willie Speaks. So <laughs> another uh, one. <laughs> yeah. So I was really happy to finally uh, meet the gentleman that was so kind. And with their twenty dollars, instead of charging kids for books, if they were kind of hemming and hawing and trying to get money from their mom. Willie actually donated twenty books. He didn't know it, <laughs> but his twenty his twenty bucks went to the kids. There awesome. you go. Well, Mary, listen, thanks a lot. Uh, we wish you the best of luck to another great, great Spring Porch Fest, and uh, we'll see you this Saturday. Absolutely. All right, Mary. Tell me if you need special parking. No problem. We have two parking cones for our special All right, so. sounds good. <laughs> thanks again. All right, that was Mary Leahy from Porch Fest, and we are going to break for a commercial and bring on Mr. Willie A. Price. There's only one number to call when you love pizza in Niagara Falls, and that's Sammy's Pizzeria, family owned for 60 years, located at 1400 Hyde Park Boulevard. They have dining room facilities, a casual bar area, or takeout and delivery. Give them a call at 716 297 8442. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? All right, and we're back again. Thanks again, Mary Lee. And we are sitting here with uh, Mr. Willie A. Price. Willie, how have you been, buddy? I am wonderful. That's Busy, good. Busy, but wonderful. That's good. That's good. So we had wanted to get you in the uh, week before, but I sort of goofed up on, on how okay. I was scheduling things because uh, you got a program that started uh, yes. last Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, would you tell us a little bit about it, what the name of the program is, what's the concept? Great. Um, we'll go from there. All right. Family Fitness Program is the name of the program. It's called the Family Fitness Program Run, Jump, and Throw Program. So okay. what we're doing is, I uh, fortunately, I was blessed by the Ralph C. Wilson Foundation to put on a summer fitness program for kids, Run, Jump, and Throw. Remember, we used to do that in school right, with the kids. Right. They wanted a uh, USA Track and Field wanted to put something on like that. So I reached out to the Ralph Wilson Foundation and got a grant to put that on. Nice. And they said, well, sure, we'll do that, you know. And so I said, well, you know what? I changed my mind. I would like to include the entire family. So let's make it, I, I rewrote the grant and I said, let's call it Family Fitness Day where we'll have the kids doing the run, jump, and throw. And while the kids are doing that, because the parents have to wait for them, it's five to right. five years old and up. So you're not leaving your little five-year-old with me to babysit. This is true. So, exactly. <laughs> so, so I said, five-year-olds and up, let's give the parents something to do. So this week we had a young lady named Danielle Bird. She was doing yoga with the parents. Okay. So she did yoga with the parents while the kids did run, jump, and throw. And then next week we're having line dancing for the parents. Dave, there you go. You ought to get out there, Dave. Line dancing? You and, line you and, dancing, yeah. So you and Brenda dance on the porch all the time. dance on the porch, yeah. Not so, on the porch. <laughs> and it gets even better on the third. Well, and we're skipping Memorial Day weekend. Okay. And then we go to June 4th, June 11th, and June 18th. And on the, four, on the 4th, we're bringing in Island Sounds. I have a guy named Papa Trini, DJ Papa Trini, and he's going to come in and do reggae and calypso and all kind of music. So, I mean, it's all about family fun and activities. And I want to thank some of my uh, sponsors, you know, the people that supported me. I want to thank Mayor Restino. He came out with us Saturday and met with the families right. and the kids. Um, 
Niagara Falls City School, they allow us to use the track and field facility. Oh, are you using the facilities at the high school? At the high school, okay. yes. We're right there at Niagara Falls High School track and field where the football stadium is. Gotcha. And they've, nice. and they've actually allowed me to use that for the last five years because we also do our summer track program there. Okay. So we're using that facility to do this run, jump, and throw. And it's just been, it's just been a great, great opportunity. We had about a little, almost close to 20 kids. And their That's parents came out, yeah, for the first week. And so we're expecting more because I, I was at Calfus School on Thursday to introduce the program. We had 50 kids. 50 kids. I thought it was just going to be one class. And the lady was like, no, we can't start yet. The other kids got to come. And I'm like, okay, how many uh -huh. other kids? And also, like, two other classes came. So it was like 50 kids. Well, that's great. And that's we're great. outside doing exercise and a lot of activities that we do in the program. So it was so really now, great. Is there, is there any cost to the families? Or Free what? and clear. Nice. And and we actually were doing a fundraiser also for any organization that comes out and volunteers with us over the next four weeks. We give you, if you have at least three volunteers, we give you $50 for each week that you come. So that'll be, it'll give up to $200 this coming week, right. by the fifth week. And if you have more than three people, or you have four or five or more members come out and volunteer and just help with the kids or exercise with us as your organization, we give you $100 nice. donated towards your organization. So you can go out there, exercise, help out, and get paid for and it. Get, and raise money for your organization. What a so country. we've invited over 40 organizations, none showed, but that's another story for another day. And, so, well, <laughs> and, and like I said, we're offering fundraisers for your organization. You want to make money for your organization, while getting healthy, this is the best way to do it. Right. Cool. Hey, quickly, um, Jay Zona, uh, he says, we're watching the show from Caddy's Treasure Island, this show. Okay. The staff agreed to stream it on all 16 TVs. Great. I have a group from Costa Rica here that would like to come on your show and discuss how they had their time, how they had a great time on their visit last month to downtown Niagara Falls hmm. than anywhere else on their trip across the East Coast. That's awesome. Great. And Jay, uh, that would be awesome. Jay, be nice. Jay Zoni, you know, anytime with me, you got an open invitation. We can link anybody here. Link them at wherever they're at. If you guys are back in town, uh, Jay, my door's open. Great job. That, great thanks job. a lot for Sorry, that. Sorry, I didn't though. mean to interrupt you guys. No, no something like that that's is good. fantastic. Yeah, that's, per that's great. Jay so. Zona, great, uh, great friend of mine, great Yankee fan. Oh, <laughs> Yankees! One of our, one of our great first responders here with the yes. Niagara Falls Fire Department. Yes. Hey, and he's on the tourism board. And he's on the tourism oh, board. Oh wow, I forgot about that. Great board. job, Jay. We'll talk on that after. I used to be on the tourism board. <laughs> now, uh, you talked about the track. I, I read something the other day, the other day. You were you were coaching some girl on a track and, oh, and she yes. and she went from one level and within well she was already one weeks of or something you, you took her like yes off. I, I i went to a track meet to watch i my saw i had my summer track program right and one of the young ladies on my summer track program a seventh grader she went into the eighth grade this year she was running for niagara falls high school okay. she said i want to run the hurdles and so i was coaching her in hurdles Showed a great improvement. She ended up going Niagara Falls High School. She's on the high school track team. Okay. And qual and she's just, I think she just missed qualifying for sectionals in the hurdles. Nice. And so I went to watch her run and saw this young lady destroying everybody on track. 100 meters she won by like 10, 15 yards. Hmm. 200 meters she won by like 20 yards. 400 she won by like 30 meters. I mean, I was like, I'm watching her and I'm like, Everybody's like, oh, she was so great. And I'm saying, you shouldn't be running 100. And so she looked at me like, you know, like, okay, everybody's congratulate me. You tell me I shouldn't run 100. And I said, what's your best eight, What's your best 400? What's your best 200? She told me. I said, she's at 58. 50, 58. And I said, okay, I'm going to get you. I can get you down to 55 by in two weeks. And she, was, she just looked at me. I said, I'm going to send you email me. Give me your email. Send me an email. I'm going to give you a workout to do. I said, and next week when you run, which was Saturday, okay. you're going to run and you're going to, that's going to give you one week. And I guarantee you're going to be under 58 because you ran like 58, nine or something. I said, you're going to be under 58. I said, and by the time you go to the Catholic championships next week in New York City, you're going to be down around 55, 56. And she didn't, she didn't believe me, right. but mm. I sent her to work out. She did the workout. She ran 57, seven at the, um, at the uh, West, West, Center, <coughs> West, Wheelville South. Invitational Saturday. Okay. 
She ran, she ran that, and then she ran 100 and 200. She won all three races again. Phenomenal. So now Phenomenal. Uh, she and, just... And you just sort of, like, tweaked some of the things she was yeah. doing? and just gave her some some techniques and some things. And I talked with her, and her mom asked, what, you know, if it was okay for me to give her some information. Right. But that's what, you know, that's what I do. I've been coaching and running. I ran for UB. I had, like, seven records from UB. I've... I've coached and ran with people who've run in the Olympics, and I always, if you can beat me, I want to know what you're doing. Right, right. So, And that's what I do. So, you know, so what did you do? How do you track this? How do you come out the blocks? So then watching and learning from those guys, I learned when I can watch a kid run, I can kind of tell them. You can bring what you right. learned down to their level. And I can say, you know, this is what you need to work on, and this is what, you know, this is where you're focusing, and this is where, you know. And so I've been able to do that. for the. I used to coach Buff State. I used to coach at UB. Right. And now I have my own club that I said, you know, Niagara Falls High School. We go every year for the last five years. That's and good. And so I'm, I'm able to look at, I can look at a person. My, as a matter of fact, real quick, Anthony Hawthorne ran for Niagara Falls High School. I okay. met him. He was running 201. And I said, I can get you down to 154 by sectionals. And he ended up running 154 at sectionals. Sweet. Winning the sectionals, going to the state meet, and running 151. And he contacted me this past summer. He ran Olympic trials for Jamaica. Wow. Yeah, and he, wanted, he called to thank me and to tell me about it because, again, this was a kid who was running 201 and thought he was doing okay. Right. And I said, 201, you should be running 154. And he's looking at me like, that's seven seconds, you know. And, and he got down to 154 and won, won the phenomenal. sectionals in state. Well, now, so. you know, I mean, you're you working a little bit with the, with the, the girls' track over there and getting yeah. some of these guys down. Four years. Um, hey, also, um, Willie, Jill's got a, a question here. Maybe you saw this. Um, did you guys see the little girl that started running and her shoe and fell off? And her shoe fell off. Yeah, that's been a big <laughs> thing. That was on, like, several channels, even yeah. some of the uh, Good Morning America and things like that. Yeah, she, her, she ran. The gun went off, and she went to take off running, and her shoe fell off. She turned around, went back, put her shoe on, and ran and caught everybody and won by 10 meters in the 200 meters. <laughs> what would she have done if that shoe didn't come off? Thank you. That's what I kept saying. Because she literally won by 10 meters after she ran and caught. I mean, and that, she was that, about 50 meters, 50, 60 meters behind. That had to take her three, four seconds to put that shoe that back shoe on. on. <laughs> and she ran and caught That's them crazy. off. She caught, she caught everybody except for one girl at the 100-meter like that halfway point, and then she passed that girl at about maybe that like ninety meters to go, wow. and she went. And well, I mean, I mean, you're doing a, you're doing a great job there, and I, I, I read a lot of things about what you're doing with the with the track and with this family fun thing, uh, fitness program. Uh, now, originally when you came in here a few months back, you were working on that boys to men program. Still doing. Uh, so that. How's that coming along? The boys to men program is actually going great, and as a matter of fact, that's part of what I want to talk to about today. Yesterday, May 16th, and you may have not known this. My was, mother, it was my mother's birthday yesterday. So that, well, that, I'm that definitely sure you were celebrating that instead. <laughs> but tell her yesterday, May 16th, was the second anniversary of the World, World Day of the Boy Child Celebration. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. So have you ever heard of that? I, I've, I've heard, I did have actually have heard of that. Okay. World Day of the Boy, Boy Child Celebration is a international celebration recognizing boys and how to work with boys. And I've been working with this organization for about three years. I've been a speaker. I've been, I just moderated a literacy uh, work, uh, panel on Sunday for them. At the end of that pan, uh, panel discussion, the creator of the World Day of the Boy Child creator contacted me and asked me would I be the U.S. ambassador to oversee wow. bringing that to the United States. So I reached out to Mary Steino and made him aware of it. And I said, I would like to make Niagara Falls the, the, the location to do this program and bring more recognition to Niagara Falls and working with boys. So we're going to be doing something with that uh, World Day to Boys Child. And next year we're going to put together, you know, have a nice event planned out. And I want to work with the city and the boys here and the boys in Buffalo. You know, Western New York boys, Niagara County. Right. And do a big event for and, it. And, you know, and that's what they need. Uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, y young boys, young girls, that's, they need programs like mm -hmm. that. To, uh, activities that can to give keep them. them the, yeah. Activities keep their minds active, keep their hands busy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, busy hands don't get in trouble. Yeah. And that's you know? the model of my, my uh, I actually started a nonprofit organization in September. I don't right. think I've. They mm -hmm. told you that. So I started a nonprofit called A Better You Lifestyle, Physical, Personal, Financial Development for Youth and Their Families. And our motto is preparing young people for success and not the streets. 
Because like you said, if you give them positive things to do, they don't have time to go out into the streets and do the things that, you know, they see. So what I've been doing, I've been meeting with different organizations and primarily guys, men, and invited them. I said, because these boys emulate what they see. If they don't see you and they don't see me and they don't see doctors and lawyers, all they see is what they see. And that's who they can emulate. They They don't have another example. Police officers, you know. So bringing those people together and doing this World Day of the Boy Child and, you know, exactly. bringing all this stuff together where these young men now see men that are doing positive things and surrounding them with those kind of men, now they can move forward. And, and you know, and that sort of goes hand, hand in hand in a way with San Quinn Stark's pro- program. With his the basketball, right. Not, not every kid is going to be a baseball player or a basketball player or a football mm-hmm. player, but he's got that group and he can show them this is what you need to do to get there. Exactly. At the same time, though, making sure their education's there. Yep, working on their personal development. You have the other side of the coin mm-hmm. where it's personal development and, and, and how to grow, how to see the doctors and the lawyers, mm-hmm. and giving them that benefit of, of what they can do. So, I mean, between the two of you guys. But you know what, what makes my program special? And I always say, I always say my passion is I always say my yeah, program is special. Yes. But what makes my program so special and so different from other, other programs we do financial literacy, where right. we, and, and we were just in LaSalle and Gaskill schools. We did an eight-week program, and we do the physical and personal development, but then we do financial literacy. So we do savings, right? Uh, then we do entrepreneurship, introduction to real estate, and introduction to the stock market. So when I say to these young men, I'm going to give you three to five ways how you can create wealth or make money for yourself where you don't have to turn to the streets to right. do those things and, and, and motivate them because now they see that there's a, a better way. You know, and, and Dave and I can both from, from the previous industry we've been in, in, in the debt collection end of it, that there is a lot of young people getting out of college that have no clue. N- not a clue at about all. About handling their finances. No. Not at all. You know, and it's, yeah, it's, some it's adult, a shame. A lot of adults like that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, it just morphs into, into the, the young adult to the yeah. adult, and it, the cycle keeps going. And it's, it's a shame because those are things that really should be taught in school. Yeah. You know, right. how to fill out a credit application, how to take care of your credit, uh, your, your personal credit, uh, how to balance your checkbook, yeah. things of that. You know, those are, it's a lost talent. It's a, it's a lost art. I will be, um, I'm getting a membership at the Trek Center. You know where the Trek Center is? Yes. A lot of people don't know where the Trek Center is. Right across the street from the gas station where the casino is. I'm getting a, um, a space there, a membership there, because we're going to be putting on those workshops at the Trek Center where people can either come or they can watch it virtually. And we just got a grant from the Small Business Development Center to help us to do that. So we're going to be putting on those workshops with youth and their families again. And so you can bring your kids with you and you can work on financial. We can work on entrepreneurship, how to start a family business. So it's all about, like I said, the agency is a better you lifestyle, which is my nonprofit, creating better lifestyles for everybody, the entire community, not just the kids, but the entire community. Well, you know, when you get to that point, if, if, if you want, I think either myself or Dave or both of us can talk Come about down. the dark yeah. side of collections of, of credit yeah. and what can happen if you screw up over here. Yeah. And if you do end up over here, what you need to do to get out of it? Yeah, you know I mean, so, like I said, I want I want to I want to invite everybody. Yeah. I, you know, so if if that's your niche, I'll bring you in and let you talk about when we talk about credit cards right. and credit, you know, I mean, things like that. Probably between the two of us, we got close to fifty years' experience in wow. the collection business. You know what my credit score is? No, eight. Nice. <laughs> Me not too. M- <laughs> not much. It was you. zero, but that was eight. You know, and, and there's ways to get, you know, when it is low, there is ways to rebuild it, you know. Yeah. But you have to have that knowledge and, and you have to have that uh, patience and discipline to get it back on track. But, yeah. uh, oh, that, that is simply phenomenal. Uh, now, I know there's a couple other programs going on. I don't know much about oh, that. Wasn't, I, didn't know, I, don't oh know if, I don't know if you want to touch base <laughs> on this. Let's talk about it. I already talked about uh, There's a program <laughs> called the Snug Program. Yes, Lord. Uh, We're going to get our Bibles out for this one. <laughs> I'm going to say a lot of yes lords in here. <laughs> so what is the snug program? I have no idea what those initials stand for. I have no clue. But but they're, they're, they're promoting it, and there's how the city's put how much into it? Or well, they no, they're getting grant? money. They're getting money they're for getting, it. They're getting, I think, somewhere between, somebody told me today, between two hundred fifty and $500,000 to help 
combat gun violence in the city of Niagara Falls. There's already a program in Buffalo okay. that doesn't want anything to do with the one in Niagara Falls. So I'll start off So do one. they have a director that's ha handling up this program? Where? In Niagara Falls? There's no one that has wants anything to do with this program. Are you kidding? <laughs> huh. I got a phone call two right. weeks ago telling me there's an RFP okay. for this program. They're looking for someone to take it over and run it, and they were asking me if my organization, hell no. I mean, heck no. Can I say hell no? Yeah, you can say hell no. Hell no. no. I said, hell no, I don't want to take this program. And they asked me why. And I said, because nobody here has enough people, you know, I'm in place to run a program where you're dealing with gun violence with youth. So you got to have counselors, you got to have case managers, you got to have programs in place. You know, you know, I my my I just started my nonprofit, right, so right. I can't do that. And so nobody else here, like I said, the program in Buffalo doesn't want to do it. Wow. They said no, we don't want it. We don't want to do Niagara Falls. So they now is Buffalo doing their own? And yes, they have but, one, but they don't want to expand out here. No, they, and that's exactly what they said. No. <laughs> so if there's any members, of the, <laughs> if there's any members of the city council out there listening, uh, give a call because I'm interested to know what the. Uh, uh, the initials S N U G stand for yeah, in this and program. I said, and I said to them, I said, I said, and they were like, well, why? Do, I said, I have programs. I have my boys to men program, which is that's what we that's the population we work with. Right. And it was we had five programs in the city of schools in Buffalo. We had two programs here, and we had a program in the high school when Miss um, Colbert was over, you know, at the uh, housing authority. Okay, right. She she sponsored us for four years, and then all of a sudden. We're not doing anything in Niagara Falls right now in any of the schools. And they said this, and I said, I said, my programs can do what we do. We do what we do. Right. If, we, if we're in place. I said, but all those other pieces that you're going to need to make this thing successful, I don't have. Right. And if you look around Niagara Falls, you really don't have anybody, you know what I mean, that has and, and, all and that you, together. And, you know, for, what, for the type of people that... Excuse me, you said you need, mm -hmm. you know, counselors and psychiatrists and psychologists. Yep, and to, you need trainers to put on programs. 250000 is, is going exactly. to piss away in, in a year exactly. and a half, two years. And then what do you have? Exactly. But and you're still going to have the same violence. Cause you, but not only do you have to have those counselors and things like that, you really have to have people in place who knows how to deal with that population. Right. The street kids. And who do, who do you have? You don't have an organization already in place like that. And that, like I said to them, I said, I can do what I do. You know, I can work with them and show them how to, you know, self-esteem and self-awareness and all the things I've been doing in my program. And we have had, those, those are the kids we get in my program. And when I say we have kids, because we, we use what is called right brain learning okay. in our programs. And what right brain learning is, because most boys, once they get past fourth grade, they don't read as well, they don't write as well. So anytime the teacher says, read this or write this, they act out so they don't have to do it and get thrown out the classroom. What we do is we do audio books, videotapes, and oral presentations. So we take all the fear away from having to read a book. Right. You know, you watch a video and we stop it halfway through and ask questions. And then, they, of course, because it's verbal, they can tell you what they saw. But if you ask them to write it down. But on the same token, you know. You're shying away from those skills, the writing skills and no, the reading skills. No, you're not. Okay. Because what you're doing is you're getting them confident. And as you're, like I said, we go into entrepreneurship and these things. So now as we're getting them confident and understanding and we move towards entrepreneurship. So now when you start that business, you're going to need to, you may have to use a contract. Right. You need to know what that contract says. So what am I saying to you? You need to know how to do what? Read. Read. So now they understand why they need to know how to read. And in that contract, you may tell that person, that person may say, well, I'm going to give you 10% or 20%. So you need to know what 20% of that amount is. So you need to know what? Math. There you go. So now they understand why they need to read. They understand okay. why they need to math. And because it's for their business, now they're all in. Remember I said, I'm going to teach you how to make money. Right. So right. now, in order for me to make money, I need to know how to read. I need to know how to do math. So now, because now I know why I need to do it, all right. So you're, you're, build, kids, you're building their confidence right. up, and then you're slowly and then bringing, you're them, slow back bringing them back them to the bed. And see, because if, if, I, if I was walking and say, when you start that business, you need to know how to read. I already lost them. Right. You need to know how to, you know how to know write and do math. I already lost them. But if I'm showing them without saying it, this is why, this, and now they understand why they need it. 
Now, when those same kids that are in my program, they, they go back in the classroom and they're sitting in front of the class asking questions. Yeah. And the teachers are coming down saying, can we bring this one and this one and this one into the program? And we got like three weeks left. I'm like, no, we can't. Talk to your principal, bring us back next year, right, it's, and it's let us September. do a, a full program with your kids. And the kids are stopping me and seeing me like walk around. Mr. Price, I thought you were going to come to the high school. We're in the high school. Can't you come to high school? Are you coming back to our school? Talk okay. to talk yeah. to your principal. Talk, talk, to, the, talk to, to the powers to be. Thank you. Well, you know what? Sounds like the program that you're but doing here is almost this, going to eliminate the need for something like this. No, down but the road. we want to be a part of that. That's why I reached out to Mayor Restino this morning and sent, and I basically said to him what I said to you. Right. I said I don't have all the programming. I said, but I have this part that's going to help these young because if you go in there saying we're going to help you get your GED. Right. These guys aren't trying to get a GED. No, no. They're trying to figure out how I can make money and not go to jail or get shot trying to make it. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to walk in and I'm going to say, how many of you guys want to make money? Of course, they're all going to raise their hand. I'm here to teach you how to make money. And that's how I start all my programs off. I'm here to show you how to make money. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to teach you how to save. We're going to teach you how to uh, start your own business, doing things that you enjoy doing. And then we're going to do introduction to entrepreneurship, and then we're going to show you, even this year, we may even show you how to start a franchise, and you can start a franchise. And then from there, we're going to introduce you to real estate and how you can buy real estate or start a real estate business, and then we're going to do introduction to the stock market. I said, how many of you guys own a pair of Nikes? They all raised their hand. I said, how many of you guys own Nike stock? What do you mean, Nike stock? I'm going to show you how you can buy Nike stock, and then when you buy that stock or Dave & Buster's, Dave and Buster's will pay you to go play because you're going to make money off of it. Well, right. I'm going to show you how to buy Nike stock. And then when you buy Nike stock, when that stock goes up, you can use Nike stock money to go buy your pair of Nikes. What kid was one doing? Right, exactly. And that's what we do in my program. Well, you know, I mean, you're giving them the basics in a different way, but they're going to get the basics. Exactly. And, and see, know. when they hear that, when they hear things like that, because nobody's ever right. talked to them like it's that. A, it's out of the box thinking. It's, yeah. it's not your regular and structure. You, have to. And, you know, because you got to make it interesting. Yeah. You know, there, there's too many things that kids can do. You know, you know, with their cell pa their cell phones and their iPads and their their uh, things that, you know, you go into a classroom setting and you just you know you're looking at the blackboard of the teacher and, yep. and they're, you're and bored they're as hell for six hours. Yeah, that's what they're doing and, too. Uh, and and like I said, that's what makes my program so different is because I actually and I'll just share a little bit about myself. I teach them the things that I was learned. Mm -hmm. I moved out when I was 16 years old. I was getting kicked out of school and all kind of problems, right. and I had to learn how to take care of myself. My stepfather was the one who taught me real estate, so that's how real estate came into play. But then he also showed me how to save money, you know, and because I was living on my own at 16 years old, I had to learn how to save money and bank sure. account and all those things. I had to get my, you know, all these things going on. And then someone introduced, I met a gentleman, multimillionaire, that owned stocks, and he introduced me to the stock market. So, I mean, these are things, I'm teaching kids things that were taught to me, and I'm saying to them, how many of you guys want to make money? They all, I know they yeah. already want to make money. So, how many of you guys want to make money? They all raise their hand. I'm here to teach you how to make money. That's how well, I start off all my programs. That's definitely a unique way to do it. And I, you know, you're on the right track. Like I said, I learned a little bit about your, your Boys to Men program, yes. and then you brought us some literature, and it was phenomenal books. And I, you know, I, I see what you're doing with the, with the sports thing and the fitness thing, so... Mm -hmm. You know, all the pieces are there, and, and you know, take my hat off to you for you know, tr you. trying to make this community better and, and putting some accountability, because some of that accountability has got to be thrown in the parents' lap. Yes. You know, once we can figure that out and get that straightened out, uh, I th actually, I think a lot of problems in society will, will fix itself. Yeah. You know? that's, why we, that's why we started Better You Lifestyle, because like I said, for youth and their families. So all the programs that we're doing now is open to the families. Right. So when we do financial literacy, which is Think and Grow Wealth, is the name of the program, Think and Grow Wealth, we bring in the entire family. That's why we're going into the Trek Center. So now you can come with your kids and we can do these, you know, financial literacy. We can do right. banking. And I spoke with like Citizens Bank and all those guys. Hey, come over. I'm talking to a guy who works at Evans Bank. He does a financial literacy. So have him come out and do a presentation on banking and opening bank accounts. And I mean, like I said, I'm working, trying to bring, I'm going to bring you and talk right. about credit. So, I mean, this is what we're doing. We're trying to help create better lifestyles for families. Because you can't teach a kid all these things on how to be successful and he's going to an unsuccessful family, going home right. every day. Because, of course, what happens? It, it, it comes right down to it. It starts, it starts with the family. That's unit. right. And it, and it really doesn't matter if it's a, a one-parent family or two-parent. It doesn't. 
It doesn't. Uh, because I've seen some great people come out of one-parent families, and mm -hmm. I've seen some great people come out of two-parent families. And But that's so, where the male mentor program comes in, too, right. where we're bringing in these men, like yourself, because now they see a man presenting. They, you know, we'll bring some women in, too. But what, what, what I try to do is I often try to bring in men. Because that's one of the things these young men don't see. I mean, they see successful women. If you keep bringing in all successful women, that's not a motivator for a right. young boy who's saying, you know, everybody I see is a woman that's successful. So by bringing in some men and then, you know, of course, adding some women in their nice period. Yeah. Right, you give them that it, nice It takes two. You know, it's, it's men and women, and, and everyone's got to work together that's and do right. things together. So. But and I even had some kids, real quick, I even had some kids that are entrepreneurs that have their own businesses. One of the young lady, uh, her name is Zandria, she started her own lip balm company years ago. Now she's in Wegmans and she has like a whole line oh, of really? stuff. Yes, I'm good friends with her mother and her father. So I'll even bring in people like that. That's phenomenal. To that talk to, you know, so that now is. they can see kids that are doing some of the things that they're doing. That is great. No, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the work <laughs> you've been doing. Uh, you know, glad you've been a, a great supporter of our show and coming down here yes, all the time. I and, appreciate uh, it. You know, uh, we try to give you as much support as we can. I appreciate so it. So what's uh, what's next for you? Just continuation of this, this fitness program and then getting well, into the school Well, we're doing the fitness year. program this month and next month. Next, uh, July 5th, we start the Niagara Track and Field Club. We're going, it's going to, this year is going to be free for kids 5 to 13. Only thing they have to pay is their USATF track and field mm -hmm. insurance, you know, registration. But it's going to be free for those kids. We are working with the Project Play. We're looking at bringing two track meets to Niagara Falls High School so the kids don't have to travel all over the place. They'll have two home meets. And then we're going to do maybe one or two meets in Rochester. And then we have a couple meets in Buffalo because right. Buffalo's actually starting a track club in Buffalo. So we're going to do some meets oh, there. Oh, good. So just... Doing, you know, That's just good. trying to get those things well, going. Well, Willie, we're, we're always here to, to support you. And, uh, you know, we'll try to get after some of your Thank events. Thank you. And uh, best of luck to you in the future on whatever you, your, your, your and endeavors. I'll, I'll keep you posted on what we're doing. Right. Thank you. Well, Dave, we're almost at that magic hour. Any final words? You've been awfully quiet today. I know you got a lot of things on your mind. Oh, no, that's okay. We're just, you know, we got the show coming up at 830. I asked uh, Mr. Bryce if he wanted to stay as a guest and because I think he could add a lot to it. Uh, so I do appreciate that. I did watch your video, by the way. Which one? Uh, what he's Sam. I, sent, I sent him over. Oh, yeah. okay. So we got that coming up, which we're gonna we're gonna tackle some very important important things that cool. are going on in this country, this city, mm -hmm. uh, relating to what happened in Buffalo. Yes. And um, do you know I was there on that Friday before? <laughs> Yeah, I read. I saw yeah, that. I was there I the day that. before. And my son, when we worked at, we worked at WeCare, if you know where that is. Yes, and it's up on uh, East uh, Amherst. Mm -hmm. But we worked at WeCare, and when we did, Christopher was a driver, my son, and he would actually stop mm -hmm. over at that particular because it, it was because the only right grocery there. store in, yeah. in that whole area. Right, <laughs> right. and well. it just so we know the area pretty mm -hmm. well because we worked up there. And, uh, you know, it's just... Sad um, state of affairs, that's yes. for sure, buddy. You know? Yeah, it is. Yes. It is. So, so definitely. All right, David, I know we're all looking forward to hearing what you have to say and, and you know, what Miss Shaw has to say. Uh, she's always she's rather outspoken and opinionated <laughs> about what, what's going on in our area and got to love her for that. Uh, but anyways, folks, uh, next week we are going to attempt to get a couple of the kids from uh, the LaSalle uh, Prep School to talk mm. about the robotics program. And... Uh, then on Janu <laughs> January, <laughs> January, June fourth, man, we have <laughs> we have Steve Sams the second. He's running for Congress and he is a military veteran. I was going to ask you, he's running for uh, for Congress. Yes. Oh, I thought it was city or something. No, Stephen Ooh. Sams the second, the uh, ex-military. Okay. Uh, he will. They've just redrawn the lines, and he does have uh, the whole city of Niagara Falls. And he will be running against the Democrat challenger, which is either Brian Higgins or uh, I can't even pronounce the other guy's name, and I'll butcher it. Uh, but Brian Higgins is probably okay. going to win that primary mm -hmm. anyways. Okay. But, uh, yes, uh, yeah. Stephen will be in here to talk to us on the 4th. Uh, the 31st of uh, May, we'll probably have a surprise guest. Or you know what? Being it's Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. who knows what we'll do at that point. So, But anyways, folks, it's been a pleasure. Always enjoy sitting here with all my good friends. Until next Tuesday, have a great week. Stay safe, and uh, talk to you then. See you in 30 minutes. Bye-bye.